Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mommy almost kills her own child and then blames other people for it. A few need to know details. It was effing hot. It was about 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but it felt like 44, an important detail for later. So I was standing in line at the checkout at my local supermarket. I think in total, I had about 10 items, some frozen goods, drinks, and snacks. I usually tend to take out one of the buds on my phone, so in case someone addresses me, I would hear it. At this time, the woman at the cash register was taking care of the payment of one client, and there was one person in front of me. And then suddenly, she appeared. The entitled mother in this story. Now, honestly, she didn't look it. She didn't even give off a mean vibe or anything. Even the way she started talking to me was overall nice and polite, at first. Excuse me, do you mind if I skip ahead? I'm in a hurry. Now, in general, if somebody politely asks me this and I don't have any urgent business of my own, I usually don't mind. This time, however, I didn't have that many groceries, so her delay would be at most a few minutes. While she was pushing a fully loaded shopping cart in front of her. So, if I would have let her skip, I'd probably still be in the store for another 10-20 to 20 minutes. So, I politely decline and tell her I will hurry as much as I can. Of course, this was a great offense. I had not given this woman her entitlement. She blew up instantly, yelling and screaming at me that she was in a hurry. And, not kidding here, had to be home in time for her shows. Now, at this time, I would like to point out that during this rant, she only said she had to be home in time for her shows. And that they were very important to her. There was nothing else making this urgent for her. This is an important bit later. Now, while this woman was going off, the person at the cash register went into ignore mode and just started scanning my groceries, which I loaded into bags while the entitled mother was going on about how I was garbage and they should ban me from the store. Now, this should have been the end of it. Just turn around and go home and forget this happened. But then she said something that, one, made me almost want to kill her, and two, made this a postable story. While I was walking away, just about to put the earplug back in, she yells, If you pass by my car, tell my son you're the reason he has to wait another half an hour for me. Now, I'm not an extremely smart person, but in this moment, my brain made some connections quickly. What I realized was this. One, again, it was very hot outside. Two, this woman had been in the store for a while, judging by the amount of groceries. Three, the entire parking lot of this store had almost no shade. Four, it was about 2 p.m., so the sun was just over its peak. I rush outside and start running past cars, scanning them for kids inside. Thankfully, one of the first cars I pass has a small child laying in the back seat. This kid is as pale as a ghost, sweating like crazy, and it looked like he was only half conscious. I run back inside, and to my utter astonishment, this woman is having a conversation with the cashier while she's checking out her groceries. I grab her by the shoulders, spin her around, and yell almost straight to her face that her kid is literally dying in your car. And if you don't do something right now, I'm smashing in your windows and calling the cops. At first, she looked at me in complete confusion, probably never been spoken to like that before in her life. Then, the realization of what I told her sunk in and she rushed outside. While she went outside, a man tapped me on the shoulder and asked what had happened. I explained the situation, actually leaving out the bit at the cash register, just saying I saw the kid in the car and knew that this woman was probably the owner. He went outside, and when I came outside, the entitled mother suddenly rushed me and got in my face, saying I was the reason she was in the store for so long, and her son's current condition was my fault. Before I can even respond, the man that approached me earlier speaks up. Turns out this man was an off-duty cop and had been in the store for a while and, as such, knew that the actual delay caused by me could not have caused this. He also said he had already called an ambulance for the kid and the cops for her. 
I don't know what happened to the entitled mother, but she completely crashed. She just sat down on the pavement and started shaking her head, not saying much except the occasional sob or not my fault. As for the ending, everything turned out okay for most parties. I stayed a while to give a statement to the cops and my contact info in case it went to court. The kid was okay afterwards, and since his mom got arrested, they called his dad or another male family member, I didn't ask, to accompany him to the hospital. As for the entitled mom, I am assuming she's going to have to stand trial for child endangerment. Not sure if she'll just get a fine or jail time. Then we have a similar post from Roxanne1930 down in the comments. I saw a similar situation. It was freaking hot outside and I went into a store where I stayed for about an hour and when coming out I saw a crowd gathered around a car. There was a little boy in it looking half dead, soaked in sweat and people were trying to get the door open but it didn't work. Luckily, a couple of big burly bikers came and smashed the windows in with their helmets. People pulled the kid out and gave him water to drink and poured some over him to cool him off. Ambulance and police came and when police were taking statements, the parents finally showed up with bags from multiple shops, showing they'd been taking their sweet time. The worst part is that instead of worrying about the kid, they started screaming at everyone for damaging their car and ordering the police to arrest everyone. Needless to say, they were the ones arrested. It ended up on the local news and I think the kid was put into foster care. The thing I really don't understand about parents leaving their kids in cars on hot days is that stories like this make the news all the time. There's just no excuse for it. There's literally no excuse. Everyone knows hot cars kill toddlers. Honestly, parents like these belong in jail. Our next Reddit post is from MadRen15. A little backstory. I'm the middle of five kids and it's a complicated mess for my mom being married three times. Basically, the order of us is my older sister from her first marriage that was raised by her grandmother for reasons I was never told. There's me and my younger brother from her second. He's only a year younger than me and we've always been super close because we were raised together. Then there's my stepsister who's a few years younger and a stepbrother a few years older than me from her third and last marriage. That man was a saint and treated me more like a daughter than my waste of skin father ever did. The oldest among us is almost 10 years older than me, and because she had a kid young, I was 8 when my first nephew was born. Thankfully, she didn't live with the rest of us then, but when she moved back in with us when I was older, around 16, she had some fight with her baby daddy and bailed. I somehow became a free babysitter for her kids every weekend. This pissed me off a lot because my mom not only allowed it, she told me I had no choice because she needed time from the kids. Never mind the fact that I'm juggling school, a part-time job in army cadets, and she was a stay-at-home mom. I had one night to myself each week to do my homework or go out with friends and my sister would bug her off and leave me with her crotch goblins. She didn't even have the decency to feed them first, and these little turds, ages 2, 7, and 8, were picky eaters. And trying to do my homework with these three fighting was more than I could take. It came to a point that I stopped coming home till late on my days off and just headed to the library or friends instead. This was also in the days before cell phones were common and cost like 900 bucks up front. So my sister couldn't text to demand where I was. I often miss the days before texting and social media for reasons like this. I know, ironic, considering I'm posting on Reddit. As soon as I would walk in the door, she practically bolted and would get pissy if I told her I had to work or cadets. Other problems she caused were things like when my boyfriend would pick me up before school and she would hit on him. Once, she grabbed his car keys and dropped them down the front of her pants and told him if he wanted them, then he would have to grab them. He quickly responded that he didn't want his hands anywhere near her filthy claptrap and we ended up walking. I lived close enough to the school, but he didn't and I had to lend him my bus pass until I could get his car keys back. Or she poked fun at a friend of mine who was really short due to Turner syndrome. Called her a beach ball because of her height combined with her double D cup size. 
On top of that, my mom and stepdad, who were truck drivers, were home less and less as we got older. My mom had made me start to pay rent when I got my part-time job, about 50 bucks a week that went into helping the bills. I hated that because I didn't make a lot and bus passes were not cheap. My mom also started to tell me that the money that I would give her for my rent was to go to my sister to buy groceries. My sister, on the other hand, used it to go to the casino with our other sisters, then lie to my mom and tell her that I didn't give her the money. I had to start getting her to sign receipts from a book I got at a dollar store just to prove she was full of garbage. Anyways, this went on for close to two years. Sorry for the long backstory, but this woman was the bane of my teen years and part of my 20s. What finally broke the camel's back was my 18th birthday. My mom and stepdad couldn't be there because of work, which was fine, and I had bought a nice dress to wear with some friends at the bar. The legal drinking age where I live is 18. They also told me they would bring me home the morning after so we could grab lunch together after they had a nap. I got home from school to shower and get dressed to head out. Because of her antics, I had a lock installed on my bedroom door because I didn't want her kids in my room because they would break things. I was in such a hurry that I forgot to relock my door while I was in the shower and when I got back to my room, she was there, trying to zip up the dress that I bought on her, but she was too fat to manage it. Take that off and get the F out of my room. But I need something to wear tonight. I'm going out and you have to watch the kids. The F I am. It's my 18th birthday. I'm going out. But I need you to watch them. You haven't been home and I can't afford a sitter. Then I hear a rip as one of the side seams bursts open. Smugly, my sister takes off the dress and drops it to the floor. Looks like you're not going now, huh? And she walked out of my room. I checked the dress. The stitches on the seam broke, so I could fix it in less than five minutes. I call my boyfriend and tell him what's going on, and he told me he would handle it, and I get ready to go. I fix the dress, get ready, and as I finish my makeup, I hear my sister start screaming in rage. I go outside and can barely hold back my laughter. All four tires on her car are flat. Then my boyfriend pulls up and I pout at her. Looks like you won't be going, huh? And we leave. Boyfriend had parked his car down the street and snuck over to let the air out, but not slash them, as he wasn't that much of a jerk. That night was a blast. What I remember of it. I didn't come home to the butt crack of dawn just as my parents got home. Mom didn't say anything, just asked if I had fun and told me to be up by 11 so we could go and eat. I went to my room and collapsed into bed. I heard my sister start to whine to them in the kitchen. Must have thought she could turn this to me to get in trouble, but my mom wasn't having any of it and tore into her like I had never seen before. Not only was my sister called selfish and childish for trying to pull such a stunt, but also she was not living there for free any longer. She was given 30 days to either get a job or leave. She moved back in with her baby daddy two weeks later. Apparently, she had been seeing him the whole time she was living with us and was getting welfare checks without giving my parents a dime to help out while not even buying so much as a box of cereal for her kids. To this day, I hate when any of my siblings, even my younger brother, ask me to watch their kids. I don't hate my nieces and nephews, far from it. I just don't want to be in the situation of being that run to free babysitter. I'm also the only one among us five who doesn't have kids and I'm perfectly content with that. My kids have four legs and fur. <laughs> OP, if she was lying to you and your family, she was also probably lying to the welfare people. I wonder if you could report her to the welfare office and potentially get her in some well-deserved trouble. That was r slash entitled parents. And just a reminder, if you want to support my channel and buy your very own r slash merch, you can click the link down in the description to visit my store.